Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will talk about power inverters. We will try to explain the basics of power inverters, how they work, and where we use them. A typical power inverter looks something like this. The inverter has red and black DC terminals on the back end, and on the front end, we find some AC electrical outlets. Power inverter has these two types of terminal because of two types of electricity, alternating current, or AC, and direct current, or DC. The inverter is used to convert DC, or direct current, into AC, or alternating current. The fundamentals of electricity you can find in one of my previous videos. Please see the link above. Electricity is produced by things, such as solar powers and batteries, which produce DC electricity. So, if we want to power our electrical devices from DC sources, which we mentioned, we need to convert DC electricity into AC electricity, and we do that with a power inverter. The power inverter consists of a number of electronic switches, known as IGBTs. The opening and closing of the switches is controlled by a controller. To control flow of electricity controller, open and close IGBTs in pairs, super fast. By controlling the path which the electricity takes, and how long it flows in the different paths, we can produce AC electricity from the DC source. To better understand this logic, instead IGBTs, we will use some simple switches to make it easier to visualize. As we already know, alternating current reverses direction. Also, we can reverse the direction of DC current by reversing the battery. We could very quickly reverse the battery to produce a rough AC supply. The easier way would be to connect four switches, or IGBTs, across our load, such as a light bulb. If we open and close these switches, or IGBTs in pairs, then we can produce AC electricity. So, if we close switch 1 and 4, then the current flows in one direction. And if we then open switches 1 and 4, and close switches 2 and 3, we get current flowing in the other direction. With a controller, we can automatically repeat open and closing these two pairs of switches. If we open and close these two pairs of switches 120 times per second, we would get 60 Hz electricity. And if we open and close these pairs of switches 100 times per second, then we would get 50 Hz electricity. Because we have a low voltage input, we're going to get a low voltage output. To reach the 120 volts, or 230 volts required to power our appliances in our homes, we need a transformer to step up the voltage. When we look at this voltage through an oscilloscope, we get a square wave in the positive and the negative regions. This is theoretically AC, because it reverses direction, but it doesn't really look much like an AC sine wave. So, how can we improve this square wave pattern? Earlier in the video, we said that we can open and close the switches at different speeds and durations to change the waveform. Well, we can do that for this too. What we do is to use a controller to rapidly open and close the switches, multiple times per cycle, in a pulsating pattern, each pulse varying in width. This is known as a pulse width modulation. With pulse width modulation cycle, it's broken up into multiple smaller segments. Each segment has a total amount of current that could flow. With rapidly pulsating the switches, we control the amount of flow occurring per segment. This will result in an average current per segment. This average current per segment is properly increased and decreased, which gives us the proper sine wave. So, the load will therefore experience a sine wave. The more segments we have, the sine wave will be smoother. We can control the output voltage by controlling how long the switches are closed for. So, we could, for example, have output of 240 volts or 120 volts just by trimming the opening and closing times. We can also control the frequency by controlling the timing of the switches. So, we could, for example, have an output of 60 Hz, 50 Hz, or 30 Hz, whatever is needed for the application. So that's how we can take a 12 volt DC battery and convert this into a 120 volt or 230 volt AC supply by using some IGBT's pulse width modulation and a transformer. As you suppose, previous example is a single phase inverter. For more power and a larger application, we need a three phase inverter, for example, to run the compressors in a large cooling system. This inverter is built into variable speed drive. 
the DC supply in this case will be a rectified three-phase AC supply. That means that three AC sine waves are combined together and pass through some diodes which prevent the electrons from flowing backwards. This turns it into a ripple DC waveform. We then use a capacitor to smooth the ripple out into a constant DC supply. To turn the clean DC into three-phase AC, we use a three-phase inverter. Like in single phase, in three-phase inverter, we use IGBTs. In this case, six IGBTs. We will animate these IGBTs as simple switches for simplicity and marked as follows. To get our three phases, we need to open and close switches in pairs to direct the flow of the current to our supply and back through return paths. That way, the connected motor will experience alternating current. For the three-phase supply, we close and open switches in pairs to simulate the three phases. Let's see how this works. First, we close switches 1 and 6. This will give us phase 1 to phase 2. Then, we close switches 1 and 2, and this will give us phase 1 to phase 3. Then, we close switches 3 and 2. This will give us phase 2 and phase 3. Then, we close switches 3 and 4. This will give us phase 2 and phase 1. Then, we close switches 5 and 4. This will give us phase 3 and phase 1. Then, we close switches 5 and 6, and this will give us phase 3 and phase 2. This cycle is repeated again and again and again. If we check this with an oscilloscope, we have a wave pattern that looks something like AC, except it's still a little bit square. This will work fine for some applications, but not all. So, again, we need to use pulse width modulation to create the sine wave. So, we're going to use a controller to rapidly open and close the switches, multiple times per cycle, in a pulsating pattern, each pulse varying in width. This is known as pulse width modulation. Like in the single phase inverter, we can control the output voltage by controlling how long the switches are closed for. Also, we can control the frequency by controlling the timing of the switches. I hope that you now know the working principles of power inverter. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Watch the rest of my videos from my YouTube channel. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks very much. See you on the next video.